there'll be blue been looking forward to this for quite some time, especially Bernard. He read this book uh, weeks ago. Said, Sid, you got to read this book. You're going to love it. And I did. The book is Soaring to Glory, a Tuskegee Airman's first-hand account of World War II, written by Philip Handelman and the hero that's set to join us momentarily, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart Jr., who served with the Tuskegee Airmen, went on to fly 43 missions in World War II, and is here today to talk about those heroic efforts and this wonderful book. Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart, hey, thank you for your service, and be welcome to the Bernie and Sid Show this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Colonel Stewart. Nice to have you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank so, you. so um, I know you're going to be uh, 95 years old. God bless you. Coming up, of all days, Independence Day, which is ironic. July 4th is your birthday. And so you were 20 years old, of course, uh, on this day, 75 years ago, June 6th, 1944. All these years later, Lieutenant Colonel, you wake up in the morning. What does this day mean to you? Well, it means that uh, 75 years or 70 years have gone by uh, uh, in, a, in a very fast time. It got here before I thought it would, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, it brings memories back of uh, my services in World War II, the, uh, the invasion, which I did not participate in at the time, but I was in the service there, and uh, I was training as an aviation cadet to be a, a fighter pilot. And very interestingly, uh, Colonel Stewart, your history, of course, your, your grandfather was born into slavery. Your family moved early on to uh, New York City, first Harlem, then Corona, Queens, where you grew up in the Depression, in an integrated neighborhood. It wasn't bad. Uh, and your love for flying uh, developed because you, you li lived in close proximity to LaGuardia Airport. And uh, you take it from there. That was uh, named Law. North Beach Airport at the time there, and the, the name was changed. Uh, Theo LaGuardia was the uh, mayor at the time, and I think it changed in October of 1939 to the name LaGuardia Airport. I used to walk down to the airport and uh, watch the planes take off and uh, land, uh, hoping someday that maybe I could go ahead and pilot one of those planes. And Sure enough, World War II came along, and I took the examination to become an uh, aviation cadet and did get my wings and did go overseas uh, with the 15th Force flying P-51s for uh, escort uh, missions, and uh, that, that was about it. Yeah, you flew them all, P-51Bs and P-51Cs, and eventually the, uh, the newer ones, the P-51Ds. But I will ask you this, Lieutenant Colonel, when you, in fact, did at 18 years old go to Tuskegee, I know you talk about you were living there on the college campus, you were actually enjoying college life. What was your very first impression of your brothers in the Tuskegee Airmen Group? Oh, I, uh, most of them were older than me. Most of them uh, uh, had been going to college, and uh, I held them in high esteem and absolute awe. And I tried to emulate uh, everything that they were doing and follow their lead. And uh, uh, it was a brotherhood and uh, big brotherhood and big sisterhood that was, uh, uh, was, was very uh, uh, momentous in my life. And, of course, Colonel Stewart, uh, I mean, it wasn't without some, uh, you know, some heartache. When you did finally enlist or, or join the, the, the uh, Air Force, the Army Air Force, you took a train with some of your buddies down to uh, the south, and you experienced a shock when you changed trains at Union Station, I believe, in Washington Square. You started to experience some of what was happening in the south and uh, while we were at war, and you're going off to fight. That's right. Uh, we started out uh, from Corona there, uh, as, uh, or downtown New York from Penn Station as an integrated group. And uh, when we got to Washington, D.C., which uh, was uh, also what was known at the time, the Mason-Dixon line there, a uh, conductor uh, walked up to me and said, you'll have to go up into the first car, which is the Jim Crow car, for colored people. And uh, I, I didn't protest at the time there. I knew that that was a system that uh, took place in the South there. But my, my friends who were coming from the neighborhood also and going in the same uh, down to Mississippi also said, well, we'll come up there with you, Harry. 
And the conductor said, oh, no, no this is uh, reserved for white people here, and <laughs> uh, he'll have to go up into the Jim Crow car. So that was my first introduction terrible, to terrible. Jim Crow. You know, I wonder, uh, again, talking to Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart, hero, and uh, his book is out, Soaring to Glory. When you left Tuskegee and before you went to Italy to start serving and flying those 43 missions, you had to go to South Carolina for a short time. I wonder what was that experience like in terms of some of the racism you had to face, as Bernie just talked about, on your way out of New York. Well, it was the same. I went to walk for South Carolina, but uh, I was determined that I would not uh, go off the base. And when I say off the base, uh, uh, mix into the uh, neighborhood uh, that they had in Walterboro and the other neighborhoods there, only because I didn't want the embarrassment and the humiliation came from, that would come from the uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, anyway yeah, the racism uh, the racism exactly yeah, sure uh, right right and uh, so I I did go from there uh, uh, overseas I went to Virginia to catch the uh, uh, boat to uh, Italy, and, uh, uh, you know, that that was it. So we're talking with Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart. The book is Soaring to Glory, a Tuskegee Airman's first-hand account of World War II. Speaking of which, you go off to Italy. Now you have a better reception amongst your fellow servicemen. You're in Italy, and uh, as Sid mentioned, 43 missions. You're escorting bombers to bomb sites in Germany. Very dangerous. And one day... You've, you've, you get into some dog fights with, uh, and you, you end up winning the Distinguished Flying Cross Fort. But tell us about that day. Well, it was a, uh, quite an eventful day. Uh, uh, there were seven of us that were flying in the uh, P-51Ds uh, up near the Danube, up near uh, uh, Austria, uh, in Austria, near uh, Vienna at the time there. And we were attacked by uh, a horde of uh, German fighters, uh, FW-190 uh, uh, aircraft. Uh, three of us were shot down. Uh, one, uh, his plane was just damaged, that's all, and he managed to get back to friendly territory in uh, uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, the second one was uh, killed instantly uh, uh, when his plane was shot down. And the third, name was Walter Manning from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he was shot down, but uh, he was able to bail out. A, uh, a, a mob uh, picked him up and threw him in a local jail in uh, near Lenz, Austria. And uh, three nights later, the same mob came back and uh, dragged him out of the jail, uh, beat him up pretty badly, and then uh, hung him from a uh, from a lamp post. Uh, uh, he lynched, lynched him. him. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, as you say, the good news is, is that uh, out of that, to this day, they still keep that gentleman in their memory. They, they they have a memorial there for him, and they still talk about it even today. Yes, that's correct. And uh, the uh, I must give credit to the Austrian government. That yep. Just about a year ago, they created a mar- memorial uh, to uh, uh, Walter Manning there, and it was very very impressive memorial, and it's a permanent memorial. Thank God. And your wingman was okay throughout all these battles. But I do want to talk about those 43 missions. You are, have been credited, Lieutenant Colonel Stewart, with shooting down three enemy planes. But uh, one of them really brought back memories of uh, Top Gun, something you competed in, by the way, in 1948, later in your life. But you had a plane behind you, and uh, he had you set in his sights. I mean, you were basically, you were literally seconds away from death. He had you. And I guess you want to do some type of maneuver. And in the end, he ended up crashing his plane and he died. And that turned out to be your third, your third hit, I guess. I gave you credit for that. Talk about that specific experience. Yes. Uh, he over-controlled anyway. Uh, I had already gotten uh, uh, two aircraft. And uh, as soon as I got them, I found out this guy was on my tail and I couldn't shake him. And I dove for the... And I got as close to the ground as possible, and I was doing some pretty violent maneuvers down by the ground there. And he was following me, but as you said, he had me dead to right, and I thought I had had it. And uh, I looked back one time, and I saw this uh, mushroom uh, flame, and uh, he had hit the ground, and evidently he had over and uh, spun into the ground. 
And, of course, again, the Soaring to Glory is the book, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, after the war, you, uh, you stayed with the, the Army Air Force, as they called it, and you were on an exercise with a squadron. You were forced to bail out over the Deep South in Appalachia. I believe it was Kentucky. Yes. And, and you hurt yourself in the bailout. And uh, tell us that story because it is uh, one that reinforces our faith in humanity. Yes, I bailed out over uh, a place called uh, Butcher Hollow in uh, uh, Kentucky. And, uh, and the plane crashed about uh, 100 yards from the uh, home of a young lady by the name of uh, Loretta Lynn. Hmm. Yeah, country country yeah. singer. Sure, but anyway, I had uh, come down in my parachute, bailed out, and uh, I guess it was about uh, uh, t- twenty oh five. I got a call from uh, that town, uh, uh, Van Leer, Kentucky, and the gentleman said that uh, he was a historian. That uh, he was uh, uh, not quite three years old when I bailed out my craft there, but. Uh, there wasn't much news about it except a uh, except a uh, uh, a rumor uh, about this plane that crashed and wanted to know if I could go ahead and bring him up to date on that. And uh, I said, "Well, what was the rumor?" And he said, "Well, he said the rumor was that a black man had stolen a B fifty two and was making a bombing raid on the town, and the American fighters went up and shot him down." Well, I fell off my chair. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not exactly correct, yeah. Well, you know, you talk about black men. We'll wrap it up with this. Um, you would think with all the missions you flew escorting bombers in World War II, if you can do that, you can certainly fly Delta Airlines. And I know, <laughs> that, when, I know that when you got home, you wanted to fly, uh, obviously, commercial flights, and uh, they were not hiring African-American men to do that. Obviously, that's changed, thank God, over the years. So really something as simple as Lieutenant Colonel seeing an African-American man as a pilot for Delta Airlines, that, that means so much to you, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's right. Well, uh, thank God they relented uh, Delta and TWA. Uh, uh, they finally ended up hiring black pilots in the 60s, and you went on to uh, a storied career with uh, some aviation outfit, and uh, it's very successful. Anyway, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart, the book is Soaring to Glory, a Tuskegee Airman's first-hand account of World War II on this D-Day, 75th anniversary of D-Day. We commemorate with you, and we're honored to do so, sir. We thank you for your service and, and everything you went through in the 20th century and the 21st century. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, there he is, uh, the hero, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart.